the Chiefs targeted Patrick Mahomes, and he's, you know, in my estimation, the second greatest quarterback of all time, nipping at the heels of Tom Brady. They targeted him, they went and got him, and their franchise turned. They were pretty good, the franchise turned. The Niners plugged in Brock Purdy, and they're in the same game. Who would you rather be? How would you rather build your team? Really, from a roster construction standpoint, are you okay building up the roster, plugging in a quarterback, or do you want to target, identify, find that guy, and then fill in the gaps around him? It's a philosophical question that I think is a big one for the Patriots this offseason. It's our big cue at two, if you want to check it out on Twitter, at Jones and Mego. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to... I'm going to take these as examples, but everybody would say Mahomes. Like, everybody would go with Mahomes, right? Like, 100% of respondents yeah, would the question say, isn't I'm totally going to go with Mahomes. You have to go for a quarterback. Like, you have to start with the quarterback to me. And either way, it's going to be a two- or three-year process to get back into serious contention in the playoffs. But for how risk-averse everybody is with the quarterbacks in the first round and saying, well, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a lock, and uh, you can't go wrong with him, and he's going to be a generational talent. If you're saying that you want to build out the personnel around and then just plug in a quarterback from whatever round, as it looks like you know the 49ers did with Brock Purdy, I would say look at the championship winning quarterbacks of the last 15 years or or just going back to, I guess, 16 now, going back to 2008. So AFC championship quarterbacks, there have been six different quarterbacks because most of them were Tom Brady. Right. Five of six were first round quarterbacks. These are guys who won the AFC championship. The other one was Tom Brady. NFC is more instructive. There were 15 different quarterbacks who won the NFC championship. Um, Eight of 15 were first rounders. So overall, since 2008, all conference championship winning quarterbacks, 61% are from the first round. If you're going to get a long-term quarterback, you're probably going to find it in the first round. And it's one thing to say... I don't love these first-round quarterbacks. I don't love who's mocked up in the first round. But if you're saying you don't want to go there because so many of them are busts, because you see other teams cycle through the first-round quarterbacks, that's just not an argument to me. you're afraid. The position you're in, that's where you start. If you have the quarterback, you're pretty much set. Like, you're good, and you'll know. And if you don't have it, then you're going to suck again, and guess what you do? You end up and you have to go into the draft again. Yeah, and to me, you know, the building up the roster is what's going to take a long time. If you don't want a long rebuild, you don't want to build up the roster around the quarterback. To turbocharge the rebuild, you find the QB. To me, now if you swing and miss, Mayo might be out of a job. You know, Max throwing coach there. Joe Dickinson is right. That might have been what cost Bill his job. And I don't know if Bill looks at it that way or not. I don't know if that's how the crafts look at it, but that's how it's starting to look from the outside looking in. You know, Mac. Bill, the crafts, that decision is what ultimately expedited Bill's exit. So if I'm Gerard Mayo, or if I'm the Patriots, rather, I am not letting Gerard Mayo call the shots on this. And I'm not letting Gerard Mayo say, ooh, you know what? It's my first year. I'm not ready to commit to a quarterback right now. Because I don't want to miss on one. And I don't want to take a two- or three-year rebuild because I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to take a quarterback now. And if he doesn't work out, I'll dive back in in two years. I'm not trying to twiddle my thumbs in the meantime and be some middling team. Arkan, how should they build it? I think they need to build it from the roster first, and the reason why I say that is because Patrick Mahomes didn't come to a team like these Patriots when he made his debut. He came to a pretty stacked Chiefs offense with Kareem Hunt, with Tyreek Hill, with Travis Kelsey, all in their 20s, and that was a team that he inherited, and he didn't inherit a team like this. If he did, I don't think he'd have been in the Super Bowl in two years if he was inheriting these Patriots. So I think that there's so much work to do on this offense. In other circumstances, maybe I'd agree with you. I'd say, yeah, go for the quarterback. That's important. And it is important, obviously who your quarterback is, but I don't think that there's too many quarterbacks, even if you hit on a pretty good one, that could walk into this offense and suddenly make them contenders. I just don't see it. I don't think that that's that's a reasonable thing to expect, and I think that with all that work that you have to do, you need to start there and uh, and work the quarterback into it. But you know they have more than a first-round pick. I know they have more than a first round okay, pick. Okay, so like, but you can sign guys in free agency and build up around the quarterback. You can draft in the second, third, fourth. Like, you can build up around the quarterback this year. You don't have to wait. It's not just like you take the quarterback in the first round and then there's nothing else around him. Like, and I get what you're saying about Mahomes. There was a lot around Mahomes, although a lot has left and a lot has peeled away. And I don't know that he came in to a team that had had success. Like, I mean, this team has been to a Super Bowl before Purdy ever got there. So 
I think the Chiefs were closer to a rebuild, but they weren't bare bones like the Pats. Or, you know, it was closer to targeting your guy, finding your guy, identifying your guy. And that's why the Chiefs elevated. And so, to me, that that's how I would do it. And, and it's not just you take the guy and there's nothing around him. He The quarterback, if you take him at three, is not going to walk into what Mac Jones had last year. That's true. He's but not. I also would be fine with using that third pick and getting somebody else, getting somebody to, for the quarterback to throw to, you know, just it, it, fortifying this offense and building it up because you can start with the quarterback, and that's not a terrible plan. I don't think that would be, like, the worst thing in the world. But what does this team need more? They need much more of an offense than just some quarterback who's, you know, making his first start ever in the NFL. That's not what Brock Purdy had. That's not what Patrick Mahomes had. Most quarterbacks who end up being good don't start off in a situation like this one. Even if there is a rebuild, you know, Mac Jones, he had a rebuild, right? They they brought in all these wide receivers yeah. and tight ends, and then two years later, the entire thing collapsed on itself. So I'd be okay with building it up and having something a little bit more uh, structurally sound than what Mac Jones had. Honestly, I think it's like you're either having one debate or the other. One debate is how much do you value the quarterback position where you think it's better to fill in everything around the quarterback, you know, get a Christian McCaffrey, get a Debo Samuel, get a good offensive line, uh, maybe do something like what Philadelphia did. Or if you think it's, if you, if you're having the conversation that going in the first round and getting one of these particular quarterbacks is not the best way to find a quarterback. Like, either you're telling... Do you get what I'm saying? Either you're telling me quarterback isn't as important as we all hold it up to be and look at the Niners and what they're able to do. They can go through just basically never having Trey Lance really see the field to going to Jimmy Garoppolo, Glass Jimmy, who's never really won anything, to going to Mr. Irrelevant and they just plug and play. Or are you saying, well, there's all these quarterbacks are first round busts. Like, you don't want to be the Jets who are going back yeah. and back and back. I mean, you could be Houston passing on CJ Stroud. You know, like, how would you feel if that was what Houston did? Because Houston wasn't ready and they were too afraid to take a quarterback. They look like morons. They wouldn't be in the playoffs. They wouldn't want to play off. I guess year. the question, Arkan, is like, because I know you don't love these quarter, this class of quarterbacks. I don't. But do you think that if you took one of these quarterbacks and they could be a CJ Stroud, that that their development is going to be really hindered because they're not in a great situation in terms of what's around them with the talent? I think that could be a, a definite problem, yes. Absolutely, I do. I think that that could be a, a, a real serious problem, and I think you've seen it with a lot of other guys who have bottomed out in their first year. You know, Bryce Young, look at him. Like, he had nothing to throw to. It was a bare-bones offense, and he looks like a total bust. Uh, Richardson's a little bit different because he got hurt, but I don't know. He didn't look like he was setting the world on fire there with the Colts, and they had a couple of guys to throw to in a, in a decent run game. So, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's examples on both sides of it, I think. And, again, this is tainted by my belief that that these quarterbacks aren't particularly uh, exciting to me this year. I just don't think that they're going to be that good. I don't think there's a lot of great pro pros okay. in this class. So. Arkan's afraid. That's okay. A lot of people are afraid to take a quarterback. How would you build your team? It's up now at Jones and Mego. It's our big question of the day. Would you build it like the Chiefs? Would you build it like the Niners? 617-779-7937. Arkan's going to have an update here in trending. I just want to get your thoughts on it quick. The commanders are not going with Ben Johnson, who we thought was the favorite there. Is Bill Belichick in the mix in Washington? No. Why? Because we would have heard it by now. Are you sure about that? I'm not. No, of course I'm not sure We heard sure a lot about, about Bill to Atlanta, and now he looks like a chump. So maybe he's going to operate in the shadows for another job. He's not going to sit and interview for another job after the Falcons told him thanks, but no Certainly not with Washington. Right. <laughs> he's going to say, come get me. No, I think Bill's out of it. Like, I really do. I think that he's going to be sitting out this year with Washington. I, Bobby Slowick, as far as we know, is still in the mix. They're still going to talk to Glenn out in uh, Detroit. So they're still looking. They're, they seem to be like all over the map. But if you look at what they're doing overall, I still think that they're going to try to make a push for someone like Bobby Slowick. Do you think Bill's warming his way in in Washington? Unless he's willing to abandon all of his principles, no. But it, there's the, the only thing I'll hold on to, the little sliver I'll hold on to, is that he'd go to watch. He'd realize, oh, my God. This really, there's no market for me. I got to go over there and, and get on bended knee, hat in hand, and say, okay, you guys can do all this analytic stuff and whatever. I just want to coach the team. That's all I'm going to be is the coach, nothing else. I don't have to bring my kids. I don't have to bring Josh McDaniels. I'll do whatever you want. And that's the one way I could see it working or the one way I could see Washington doing it. Okay. So is Bill still alive? Is he still going to have a chance at a job this offseason? Uh, the Washington job is open. They're not going with the perceived favorite in Ben Johnson. What does it mean?